to us and sharing your, your experiences and your knowledge with us as an industry. Um, we're very proud and very happy that you are doing it. Maybe just to start off, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and your path? Uh, then we'll go on to issues. Okay, Nico, it's nice to be here. Yeah, um, my background is I'm a mechanical industrial engineer that has spent mo most of my working life in uh, civil construction. Firstly, uh, on the mechanical side and later on the material supply side. I, um, I met my first crusher in the, the winter of 1983 in... Uh, a place called Westminster in the Free State. And we took this mobile crusher to Verkeer de Vlei, where we started um, crushing. When I ordered parts for this crusher, the supplier started laughing at me. He said, you know what, we imported that crusher. It was a double toggle jaw and a gyro and a screen mobile unit in 1937, before the World War. And uh, it was a style A, and there are absolutely no parts available anymore in, in the world. So we had to make it ourselves. The, the main gear and the eccentric was uh, one cast unit. And when the main gear broke, we had to cast that whole thing. But we finished the job and we finished the next job with that Karasha. And um, after that, I must have been involved to, if not a hundred, close to a hundred different crushing sites in Southern Africa, different types of rock, different equipment, different clients, different spec, South African, European spec, and also uh, different consulting engineers. So yeah, I've, I've come a long way and it was uh, was always, always an interesting journey. S I'm sorry, Nikki, your sound is off. Every time I put it off, I think I must remember when I put it on. Um, <laughs> you also have been around for, for quite a while as a sponsor chairperson. Yes, I, I've, I've been around. <clears throat> I've, I've been with Aspasa right from its its uh, humble beginnings. It, was it early 1990s or late 1980s? I, I can't recall. In Bloemfontein. Yes. Yes, yeah. Those were the good days. We used to do the Sutu trips, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, maybe just share with us some of the challenges you see from your perspective that we have in the industry. Nico, what we have is, is it, you know, our industry has been sorted out in terms of crushing and in terms of specification and all that. But in terms of skills, I see a huge challenge, you know, and, and the less skills we have, we tend to automate our equipment. And the more we automate our equipment, the less people we need. And that is not what our country needs. What our country needs is that we need to, to get the skills on board. And what our country needs is that we, is that we, uh, we train people so that we can employ people. So that to me is the biggest problem that I see, uh, Nico. Um, that, that is the biggest challenge that we have. And I think each and every one should should look at this and, and should get proper skills on board uh, by, by training and, and, and educating people in our industry. Thanks, Kat. Can I just ask that when I'm talking to you, apparently there's a echo, Annika uh, says there's a huge echo, I can hear it. It's not on my side. Can you maybe just put your, your sound off? There we are. Now, if I could just ask the question there, it's stopped now. If I could just ask the next question. Yes, I think uh, training, development, people development is a major, major problem. And I've had other uh, guests have, have raised the same thing. 
And I think we need to, as a spaza, uh, maybe focus in on people development. We are nearly registered with EXA. What we're trying to do is, is once you're registered with EXA, we're going to use people like you that have got the experience uh, to take young, young engineers and develop them to become uh, 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 compliant and good leaders. So, yeah, that's a very important thing. Some of the positive issues that you've heard or that you know or that you view, if you could share those with you, just for, don't forget your mic. Miko, I'll give you my opinion on the positives. Uh, through the years, I've noticed, and, and, and to me, that is the biggest positive, is that, uh, that there is a, a sense of responsibility and accountability between the quarry operators that is now happening. You know, um, a sort of a sense of, 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 of responsibility about sustainability in all its forms. Uh, what do I mean by that? Just look at the LTIFR figures coming down, look, the deaths in our industry coming down. The, the way that we look at health and safety and the way that we um, uh, look at the environment at the moment, it is, um, it, it is quite easy to see if you travel, for instance, um, on roads that was built many years ago, you would see all these, all these quarries next to the road where the people were just worried about the shortest haul distance. And they would leave it like, just like that with, with the big rocks lying there. And when I spoke to the guys, they would say to me, I'm not getting paid to, to rehab it or, 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 or get rid of the stones. These days, they would build the roads, and, and uh, I can promise you, I can take you to sites where, where you won't even know that there is a huge quarry within striking distance of the contract, but it is behind a copy or it is, it is behind a berm, it, it is hidden away so that it, uh, you, you won't even know about it. They still use the same material, just in a more responsible way. So, um, the positives is I, I, I like where we have uplifted our industry to become an industry to be proud of. You know, it is, it is we, we, will, we will and we will for the next years to come still dig holes in the ground. We, would, we are just doing it much more responsible, in a much more responsible way than we, we used to do it. Any other issues uh, that you'd like to raise? No, I, I would say that that is the that is the that, that is the biggest positive, and, and and I like what I see there. Of course, there are you know as this goes along, as I said, it is sustain, sustainability in all its forms that uh, that uh, it got better and better. Thanks. Yes, I. I think you, you've hit the nail on the head there. Um, some of the people that I've interviewed have, have gone down the same line as you, saying that we've done a, a good job, and you were part of that, have done a good job in trying to get people to do things differently. So uh, it's, a, it's a theme that's coming through, and a theme that as far as has played its role. I think... Um, is there any future problems that that you see that if we don't address them, um, they could catch up with us? Nico, uh, I think the short-term problems we are working on and we're working with that. Whatever the short-term problems might be, you know, if it's environmental, if it's law, it's specification or what have you. I'm thinking more medium and long-term. Uh, when I say my the biggest Future, future problem I see is the availability of good quality, competent rock close to the market. You know, through GAIN, where, where, where you have been active and, uh, and, and, and I was part of it, uh, they, they told us in, in certain cities in, in the USA, they, they now are going for underground mining 
of aggregates. The alternative they have is, is a quarry that is right outside the perimeters of the, of the metropole, which could be 100 to 150 kilometers away. So we, we, all buildings you see needs a lot of aggregates or building materials. And I, and, and, and I think that, that and, and it's not necessary to look at it now, but just think about it, of what is going to happen in, in years to come. Uh, uh, we, it, it's easy to say it's far off, but before, before we blink, we're there. And then, uh, and then we must have uh, we we must have uh, alternatives in place. So, and uh, Nico, that is that is my sense worth of uh, of future problems. Th thanks. I think that's very relevant too. It uh, we often don't think about the future because we only live in today. Then, I mean, the last sort of thing I would like you to raise is uh, your views and opinions of a place like Asparza and its future, if you might share that with our viewers, that would help us a lot too. Uh, just to cl clarify, we aren't paying anybody to say good things about Asparza, so um, we, we, we rely on people's uh, real heart views. Thanks. Nico, let me start off by telling you what Asparza is not. Aspasa is not the forum that will go to the suppliers and negotiate a lower price for its members <coughs> for, for, for equipment or spares or whatever. Not. Also, Aspasa is not the forum uh, uh, where, where, where we can sit around a table and we can talk about prices or we talk about any anti-competitive uh, actions. That's not, that is out. But what are we? We are, we as ASPASA, and, and I say we because I'm part of it. ASPASA is the association that will assist you in, 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 in the interpretation of the laws of the, regulate, the regulators. What do I mean by that? I mean by that the interpretation of the, the diesel levies, how it should, how it should be implemented. The, uh, also of the, of the uh, uh, Royalty Act. You know, we have, we have come a long way with it. I think that, that the industry has been saved millions of rands in the process by, uh, by, by the actions of Aspasa. Um, you know, there are also things like the new Koto that used to be Kolta. Before Asparza, uh, they, we, we were responsible for the grading of the material until after compaction in the road, something that we had no control over. So fortunately, through our actions, we could now be involved in these things to, to have these specifications drawn up. And, and at the moment, we are busy with the, with, with the laboratories. And uh, so there are a lot of things that we are busy with, that things that, that I don't care what size your company is, and I don't care how important your company is and what leader in the industry it is. You cannot do it alone. You have to have uh, a unity and, and lots of voices and an association to, to uh, to go to whoever um, and and, uh, and 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 get to the, the and, and represent the industry to 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 voice your 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 concerns and your problems and have something done about it. And we are very fortunate in Aspasa that uh, all the companies would would join their forces so that we can have a a, 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 a in the end. Uh, uh, a specification that would suit the industry also, but also uh, fulfilling its its original uh, intention. So, so 
we we need to, to, to join Aspasa. And, and then if you look at Aspasa, Nico, uh, coming back to you, I mean, you have what makes you an ideal person to, 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 to lead it is, is you have a, a background in law and you are also now with us for 22 years, if I'm correct. And, uh, and, and that gives you a lot of, 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 of background. And, and through, these, through this time, you managed to build up a, with your team, with your team of competent team of ladies, you, 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 you have built up an, a, a network a network that is as such that you can, from your cell phone, phone the DG on his personal cell phone number. It, it is just, it is so valuable for us to have all that uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and have certain issues addressed. Um, through, again, the global internet, uh, you know, whatever we do or whatever is waiting for us, maybe they have done it already or the other way around. And we have experienced that. You know, like, for instance, when we thought that illegal mining is only a problem in South Africa, we found out that illegal mining is a worldwide problem. And we could start finding out what the other people do with that. And, uh, and we are in the process with the authorities to, 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 to see if we, can, if we can better regulate this illegal mining that is going on. So, um, so Miku, I think that we should all join us, Barca, so that we can have a better industry and, uh, and, a, and a more compliant industry and, uh, and a, a better sustainable future for our, in, for our industry. That is what I have to say, Nico. Thanks, Gert, and thanks for all your time and your trouble, and sorry that you had to do it twice uh, due to recordings. Um, I'm just going to ask Annika to stop the recording and don't go away because we can use the few minutes that we've got. So Annika, can you stop the recording? The recording is stopped. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.